Yeah, so welcome to the ACE Conference 2014. I'm glad that you could all make it. And uh, I know there's a lot of interesting presentations that are going to be made and a lot of interesting research and uh, projects that we'll get to look at together. So just to begin with, I'm going to give a, a quick overview of the idea of how drawing relates to the practice of architecture and um, and civil engineering. And this is especially important in our, in our current time when we are faced with so many um, complex problems that are uh, facing the world and that make uh, it necessary to have a, a sort of broad interdisciplinary collaborative approach to design processes. And at the same time that that's happening, there's a, a certain amount of uh, loss of, of clarity in the way that both the professions of engineering and architecture are able to work together in um, any sort of effective modes of communication, which um, should include drawing to a, um, to a much higher degree. So I'm going to show a number of um, examples of historical precedents of drawing by architects and engineers and talk through a series of case studies about how drawing relates to, um, to the design, imagination, and uh, production process working towards construction. So right now in the world, and this is especially important here in Asia, we have all sorts of complex pressures on the construction industry that we've never really had in the past. Uh, we're faced with very rapid urbanization, an unprecedented degree of change in uh, in the way people live, the density of the way people live, and the, the speed of construction. At the same time that we have this great need for new, um, new amounts of construction, we have increasing complexity in the, the technological possibilities, uh, the range of um, modes of, of construction, production, fabrication that are available to us. We're also faced with an increasing need for affordability and uh, economic efficiency in architecture. The, the resources are being stretched increasingly thin throughout the world, and we need to find much uh, better ways of becoming efficient in the construction industries. At the same time, we have all sorts of pressures in terms of our environmental um, impact through construction on, on the natural world and uh, on the urban world. So we have all sorts of issues of sustainability that we need to address that are quite vital for the, the future of human life and construction. So with all of that uh, sort of complex pressure facing our industry, uh, the construction industry and architecture and civil engineers, it's especially important that we start to work together much more collaboratively. We can't have these separate silos of different expertise in the field. We have to face these complex issues in a very um, interdisciplinary, interwoven sort of a, um, a process. And, and to facilitate that, we need to find ways to, to communicate with each other in the different fields. And part of that becomes more complex as our drawing methods through various forms of visualization through different analytic uh, software methods and <clears throat> modes of research practice uh, actually draw us apart so that we tend to less and less understand each other in the different fields. So a sort of interdisciplinary approach to drawing is something that hasn't been thought about very much, but it's really essential that we start to understand uh, visual means of communication between architects, engineers, builders, and the general public. So that's the, uh, the kind of overall um, background for this talk. W with this um, increased complexity that's facing our industries, there's an increasing need for this interdisciplinary collaboration through shared visualization. And we have a number of ways of doing this through analytic drawing, through um, sort of experimental um, imaginative drawing, through technical drawing. But this, uh, any of these methods require a great deal of um, sort of faith and shared, um, shared respect across disciplines 
including allowing for a certain degree of experimentation and, uh, and risk and um, a certain amount of projection of understanding of the possibilities that different uh, areas of expertise bring to the table. So we have a, a general idea sometimes that architects are more on the, the design imagination side and the civil engineers are more on the technical um, sort of problem solving side of the design process. But historically, that isn't always the case. Uh, architects are very much involved in the technical um, production of the world, and engineers are very involved in the imaginative innovation side of the world. And to really harness all of that possibility between our, our fields, we need to um, work on some of these means of uh, collaboration that involve uh, experiments, uh, suspension of, of disbelief about the initial uh, origins of ideas and a lot of sort of innovative, uh, investigative processes of, of visualization and um, technical drawings working towards the production process. So as, as we work together in architecture and engineering from small research uh, projects on very specific uh, areas of, um, of study and on sort of broad imaginative ideas about how people will live in the world in terms of uh, urban design and uh, urban imagination. We, we have to integrate these areas of very fine-grained, deep technical knowledge into imagination about the, um, the broad issues of life in a, um, in a impacted planet of uh, very, very complex economic and environmental pressures. So as we, as we bring these uh, technical issues of, um, of construction uh, communication to bear on the imagination and projection of uh, future possibilities, we can look back to quite a few precedents uh, in the way that people have drawn and uh, presented, communicated ideas about uh, construction in the past. So I'm going to quickly show some of the, the, the kind of shared background of um, visual culture that we, that we have as architects and engineers, from the sort of medieval drawings of cities, starting to understand how people have constructed things, to the, uh, in this case, Piranesi's drawings of, of Rome, where we started to project backwards and understand the world and uh, try to create um, uh, a memory or a, a past, uh, past looking imagination of what uh, classical cultures uh, produced as cities. And then this is the, the famous Noli plan in, in Rome. Uh, one of the uh, kind of uh, seminal tools in the understanding of the way cities are are conceived and constructed. So, and these uh, these ideas then through drawing that have been visualized in drawing and that have brought tremendous new insights to understanding of, of human culture and construction have then uh, brought forward a whole range of different ways that people have tended then to, to draw the environment and experiment with drawings about the environment, trying to get at a whole range of ideas from the, the kind of technical idea of construction of cities to the, the social and cultural issues of the city to uh, very spatial understandings of the way all of these um, conceptions of our life in cities start to impact um, both the technology, so we, we see here a, a real compaction of technology and its understanding in the, the broader uh, human conception of, of space and life. So from the 20th century uh, drawings of uh, Constant, uh, John Hayduck, uh, Lebius Woods, we have all sorts of examples of very experimental drawings about life in the city, uh, possible 
understandings of the way cities impact our world and uh, relate to our life. And then we have uh, increasing experiments in more technical understandings of analytical software as applied to regional planning and urban planning so that we can start to layer up many different understandings into complex digital models. In the, uh, the history of uh, the drawing of technology, we have all sorts of fantastic examples of ways that uh, designers, builders, fabricators of things have communicated with each other and communicated to the larger public about what uh, technology means in terms of production and in terms of the way that we interact with it. And a lot of these examples from other fields outside of architecture and engineering tend to be much more um, directly accessible to the, to the general public. And this is one of the, uh, the areas in which current uh, practices of architecture and engineering really uh, fail to, to connect with the, the larger world and to fail to connect and make people, the, the broader public, understand how complex the issues are why technological change is required, why um, different construction methods are significant in different ways for different purposes. And we don't really have a means of communicating these sorts of technological issues in civil engineering and architecture in the same way that people have experimented with them in other areas of design. Uh, so in the, in the history of engineering drawing, there are these quite amazing drawings, cutaway views, um, uh, transparent views, technological overlays of different components at, uh, um, with different emphases so that we can see the whole idea and we can zoom in down to the, the smaller pieces. So th these are techniques that we largely don't use anymore. So th this is an example of the sort of uh, artist's conception of engineering drawing that we saw more in the 1950s, for example where there was a great deal of public interest in, uh, in engineering technology and in the idea of uh, what the new possibilities of life and, uh, and technology would mean. Uh, but again, there's, there's less and less of this sort of um, drawing that is somehow accessible both across fields and um, to the general public. So we have all kinds of these great examples. And then as we move forward, there are examples from other fields. This is uh, a section through a cooking pot uh, that shows us using photography and digital photography and digital um, image making, we start to be able to use ways of visualizing information that, again, is typically outside of our um, our general use of um, drawing and visualization in architecture and engineering. So as, as we come more towards building construction, we have um, some really interesting use of uh, three-dimensional uh, visualization and construction drawing. Again, typically not the, tor the sorts of things that are done for building construction, but more in allied industries. But increasingly, there are, uh, there are construction drawings, civil engineering drawings, architecture drawings that are really starting to use some of these other uh, fabrication um, and uh, engineering types of visualizations in the construction drawing process. So we have a, a lot of experiments in the way that we can show more technical information and uh, visualize it in a variety of different ways through digital modeling and then taking apart the models, getting down into the, the actual fabrication details. And uh, both at the same time that we're able to, to zoom in, we're able to zoom out and start to look at the way buildings are becoming extremely complex systems with all kinds of simultaneous um, technologies operating within them, which of course is a, a complexity in construction, but we also, through drawing, have these visualization and clash detection and digital uh, modeling, building information modeling tools 
that start to make uh, construction drawings and construction processes that we <coughs> employed in the past uh, shift into a quite different uh, sort of um, integration of drawing and fabrication. So at the same time we have this range of drawings that are related to um, ways of communicating ideas. There's the other aspect of drawing that is quite neglected as a, um, as a, as a practice in uh, engineering especially, but also in, in architecture, and, and that is the sort of investigative drawing, the experimental drawing that starts to uh, try to look for an idea through drawing or explain, understand it, an idea before it's uh, fully understood by the, the maker of the idea, before it's fully understood and ready to be communicated, there's the need to, to work towards innovation. And this requires experimental drawing uh, through a variety of different means, from uh, digital modeling and experimentation to uh, the old-fashioned uh, hand drawing methods where we have to uh, provide space in our, our practice of architecture and engineering for these sorts of experimental drawing methods where we don't yet know exactly what the issue is. We don't know exactly what the idea is for how these things will be employed or how they will be built, how they will be um, communicated to the fabricators. But first we have to get out on the table a whole range of ideas and experiments and make these available for cross-disciplinary discussion, for imagination, for understanding of um, issues of motion, time change, spatial uh, relationships. And this is another thing that in the history of um, drawing practice, the history of architecture and engineering, is an essential tool that we can't neglect in our, in our rush to digital modeling, for example. We still have to work on these much more experimental processes. So I, I'm gonna show you now in my own work um, a, a series of case studies, my own work, my work with my brother Peter in um, our construction firm and with other people like Vera Alshat, who's in, in the room, uh, work with people in, in different places. Uh, case studies emphasizing the drawing process in the, um, uh, in the process of shifting from idea into production. So th this is a very quick uh, case study in a uh, small house in Palo Alto, California in the United States. It's a modular building that's built in a factory and to, to work towards increasingly efficient uh, modes of construction requires a different understanding of the sorts of drawings that are required in the process and the different uh, means of communication. Um, this becomes more clear. This is a, a project for um, Harvard University, a small classroom building uh, that was uh, a very low cost, very high, um, high speed construction process, about six months design and construction a modular building that uh, was built halfway across the country, had to come together in pieces. So again, the drawing process is very different in working with uh, manufacturing um, contractors as opposed to general contractors. There's different forms of visualization techniques and a, a real emphasis in the process, not only on the process of construction, but to facilitate an efficient process of construction needing to zoom into details and show these details, not just in the more typical uh, construction document approach, but in showing people who aren't always used to those documents, uh, alternative means of visualization where you really get into exactly how things come together, the order of uh, fabrication, the um, overlapping elements so that everything can be conceived, drawn, and then fabricated as a, as a holistic uh, process. So th these are relatively simple buildings, but they have a fair number of complex parts that through drawing can be um, 
brought straight into uh, fabrication processes, straight into uh, some digital fabrication, and uh, then pulling diverse elements uh, together uh, <coughs> and, <coughs> excuse me, um, bringing the modules of, of drawing into the modularity of fabrication, bringing this all together into a completed process. One of the uh, important elements in that is the early um, analytic software that focuses on the, um, on the environmental impact and the environmental relationships in the building processes. So this process of uh, shifting now to a, a small classroom for the state of Hawaii in the United States. Uh, this is a, a net zero energy modular building. It, uh, it was a complex um, design build uh, collaboration between a number of different firms. So there's a lot of visualization just of the, the process of collaboration. And then back into these issues of, uh, even with modular construction, trying to get into very site-specific um, ideas about how, how the environment impacts a building, and especially in a, a net zero energy type of application, it's essential to uh, use analytic software to, uh, to model in advance the interaction of the building in relationship to the specific environment that it's working within. So uh, being able to then recognize the, the sort of complex uh, relationships of the natural environment, the urban environment, the context that impacts a building involves being able to visualize that, being able to make this a part of the drawing process, not just through technical drawing of the conventional sort, but trying to figure out how do we draw sunlight, how do we draw wind flow, how do we draw rain, how do we draw um, daylighting, all of these issues going from the analytic software into diagramming into then the fabrication drawings is a, an essential way to bring these larger environmental issues into the understanding of how to build the, the process as a, as, a construction, um, as a construction process. So this means uh, a lot of emphasis in, in our current drawing um, world on analytic software, which opens up an entirely new sort of uh, drawing world for architects and engineers. And there's been a lot of advance in the last 20 years in our ability to visualize non, uh, well, it's physical, definitely physical phenomena such as wind and sun and so forth, but it's, it's not the stuff that we typically draw, yet it is the, uh, the basic sort of environmental context that we build within. So these new softwares that not only are able to quantify the uh, natural phenomena around us, but they are also able to, to visualize that, make it uh, apparent and obvious for not just uh, technical specialists, but also for designers working uh, on a variety of different issues. This opens up uh, enormous new possibilities for the way that architects and engineers work together to, uh, to visualize phenomena and then to apply it in the design of structures. So this uh, sort of um, process is also uh, brings us to the idea of design drawing as uh, a very facile way to start to show how buildings can adapt uh, to different sorts of contexts and, um, and conditions. So this is essentially the same building. In this case, it's adapted for the environment of California, it becomes a very different building. And then through, um, even within a sort of modular process of construction, we can start to modify elements and through drawing very quickly start to visualize different sorts of possibilities within a um, uh, a sort of common language that has a good deal of adaptability within it. 
Um, these are examples of um, projects with students that are focused on, uh, so th these are projects at the University of California, Berkeley, where the students are working on learning about uh, processes of construction through digital modeling, through drawing, through model making, through full scale prototyping, uh, all as one continuous process from, from drawing through making. And ultimately, that's what all of us are interested in, not drawing and design as a separate sort of uh, process, but instead uh, drawing and design moving through fabrication through, um, through the construction process. So th this sort of integration of drawing and making is essential in the way that I think about teaching students. And it brings uh, together a lot of these issues of what, what the potential of our, um, of our field uh, really opens up for us. And, and that is to start thinking, as we have uh, new opportunities for much denser cities, as we have the need to build rapidly with uh, denser cities, we have to also emphasize high qualities of life, high qualities of sustainability, high quality of integration with natural environments. And to accomplish this, it requires a great deal of design imagination on the one hand, a great deal of analytical uh, research on the natural phenomena uh, surrounding a building, the airflow, the sunlight, the daylight, uh, all the, the effects that uh, are critical to our, our quality of life in, in the natural world, even when we're in a constructed world, and then bringing these to bear through digital drawing into visualization of uh, very particular social uh, structures and integrations to make a, a high quality of urban life. And then zooming back into the, the construction details that uh, facilitate what is possible for, um, for doing these sorts of construction um, projects with great efficiency and affordability. So a lot of times as architects and engineers, we think that first of all, we are uh, figuring out technical details, we're working up towards the building, the building then works up and becomes part of the city. But increasingly, in a world where everything is so interconnected, we can no longer uh, work in this sort of a, a linear path. Instead, we have to use drawing, analysis, analysis of the world uh, through analytic software to first look globally at the way we want our cities to be built, what kind of life we want to have in the world, and then we have to start to work backwards and say, if we want to build sustainably, if we want to build efficiently, affordably, if we want to have people uh, enjoying their, their terrace, their, their home, they have uh, a good quality of life, if we want to achieve that, then we work backwards. What is the technology that we need to invent, to design, to put together, to integrate in order to, um, to create these possibilities? And of course, these are not linear either from the technical detail up to the city or from the city in a linear, linear way down to the technical detail. Actually, it's a, it's a cyclical process, as we all know. It's an iterative process of design where we're working simultaneously with the details and with the large-scale uh, urban design plans and trying to integrate all of these through digital drawing, through imaginative hand drawing, trying to figure out ways that we can um, imagine alternatives to the way that we are doing things now, thinking about alternative ways to interact with the natural environment and to create uh, new qualities of life, and to experiment with these things through drawing, through detailing, uh, at multiple scales simultaneously. So. The, to, to do this requires both the digital drawing, the hand drawing, the model making, the uh, large scale prototyping, and uh, most important, it requires a great deal of imagination, uh, interdisciplinary collaboration between engineers and architects, and uh, a lot of 
faith in the imagination and the kind of technical possibility of drawing to open up new worlds for our, for our disciplines. So with that, I'd like to uh, thank you again for all being here.